Welcome back. Hydroplane races are returning to Soap Lake in June. The city council approved a permit for the Smokeyam Resort Hydroplane Regatta. Councilwoman Kat Sanderson said the event draws enough racers and fans to fill the hotel and motel rooms in Soap Lake and Ephrata. Councilman Robert Brown opposed the permit after he questioned whether the event had enough portable toilets. He was told that the existing city restrooms at the RV campground were sufficient. SAVI is building a new 135,000 square foot data center on its Quincy campus. Seattle-based SAVI is one of the largest data, centers, uh, data center firms in Washington. In addition to Quincy, it has data center facilities in Seattle and Wenatchee. The company also has data centers in New York City and Ashburn, Virginia. SAVI expects the first 2.7 megawatt pod of the new data center space to start operating in October. Once the second building is completed, there will be more than a total of 400,000 square feet of space on its campus. A new flagpole for East Main Avenue could be delivered to Soap Lake soon. Soap Lake City Council agreed to order a $4,800 flagpole. The flagpole will be installed in a newly constructed median on Main Avenue near Soap Lake Public Library. Donations toward the 50-foot flagpoles totaled $6,700. The pole comes with a 15-foot by 10-foot flag. The pole will be lighted at night and major donors' names will be etched into a monument at the base of the pole. The flagpole is part of the city's $2 million downtown improvement project, which included new sewer pipes, wider sidewalks, crosswalk bump outs, new light poles, and bike racks. The flagpole will be in place by the June 6th dedication of downtown Soap Lake's new look. In Northwest News, Sunday marked the one-year anniversary of the deadly landslide in Oso. Here you can see people gathered to remember the 43 people killed in the disaster on March 22, 2014. The mudslide wiped out the Steelhead Haven neighborhood in Oso. Officials said it moved quickly, 50 to 70 miles per hour. At the ceremony, officials read the names of the victims and rang a bell in their honor. A moment of silence was also held. A Border Patrol agent shot and killed a man who illegally crossed the border between U.S. and Canada. It turns out the man was wanted for murder. Cairo's Graham Johnson has the details. This is probably the spot that he crossed. Rod Fadden lives 200 feet from Canada and today showed us the trail across the border behind his Sumas home. There's a sensor right there. The sensor is well hidden. A few minutes after Fadden stepped in front of it, a border agent showed up. Just to be sure everybody here is in the United States or in the Canada and we don't have anybody going back and forth. On Thursday, investigators say a man crossing into the U.S. illegally set off a sensor and was erratic and threatening to two border agents. The subject refused the agent's commands, then assaulted one of the agents with an unknown incapacitating spray. The agent shot the man dead. Michael Kipling was home making lunch when he heard the gunshots. I heard three consecutive shots. It sounded like a handgun. Uh, it was pop, pop, pop. Today, investigators revealed the dead man was wanted for murder and say they later found a hatchet in his backpack. Neighbors tell us it's usually quiet along the border, but the Whatcom County Sheriff reports an increasing number of assaults against law enforcement. There's people crossing that international border to bring crime and violence to our community all the time. That's going to do it for us here at iFiber One News. We want to thank you for watching, and we'll see you again tomorrow.